Well, good morning. Yeah. And a good morning to you. Well, it's certainly um, a wonderful, wonderful to be here and see all the smiling faces here in the Lord's house. Thank you so much for uh, your attendance today. And if you're a guest, we're especially grateful. And uh, if you would like, we have connection cards located in front of you in the pews. If you would like to fill one out, we'd love to learn more about you and maybe in turn share more about the ministries of Shallow Well Church. And again, we're very grateful that you would come and visit us today. So a couple uh, on your bulletin, if you um, would look at your bulletin. So the Board of Christian Education meeting will be at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. So it'll be at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. So um, mark your calendars, Board of Christian Ed members uh, accordingly. 6 o'clock tomorrow night. Now I'm told, this is, this is hot off the press, okay? Um, I'm told that there's still room for the well-wishers trip on Thursday, okay? And we're talking Hudson Bay Seafood. It's going to be good. So if you want to um, have some good seafood and want to ride, um, uh, get a ride there, then talk to Larry or Patricia Thomas. And then finally, on Saturday, it's going to be the Easter celebration for the children, and that's going to be from 11 to 1, and you can read all the good things that are going to occur. And um, are we good, Mary, on the donations, or do we need more? Probably drinks. Um, Capri Suns or little canned drinks, if you if you could help us out, would be great. I think we're good on the candy and the little Debbies, and thank you to everyone who has donated. We're very grateful. So that would be a good time. And so now what we're going to do, I'm going to ask Shannon Godfrey to come up. This is a great hymn, and since um, we are entering the resurrection season if you will palm sunday of course today and then next sunday will be when we celebrate the resurrection of our lord i'm super excited and i would ask and i'll remind you at the end of the service as well please invite family and friends and neighbors and acquaintances and particularly those who don't know jesus because we will proclaim jesus the resurrected amen. jesus amen so at the cross, at the cross, y'all go ahead and stand. Shannon's going to lead us. It's going to be great. It's hymn number 139. And I, I just wanted to make one announcement really fast. Um, the First Congregational Christian Church next Friday is having a Good Friday service at 7 p.m. That's my dad's church. Um, and then they're having an Easter sunrise service at 7 a.m. on Easter Sunday morning. So if you'd like to come, they'd love to have you. So let's sing.
Blessed be the Lord who daily bears us up. God is our salvation, our refuge, and our rock. O kingdoms of the earth, sing to God. Sing praises to the Lord, our eternal God. Indeed, and let us pray. And we do thank you, O eternal God, the great God of the universe. Thank you for your great love for your creation. And you created us for a purpose. Your desire in creation was that we would worship you. You, de you desire all to know you and worship you as their Lord. Unfortunately, there are many obstacles, many other gods that people would rather follow. And that's why we have a mandate to share truth. Truth is a person. That person is Jesus Christ. And that's why this week, this holy week, we celebrate, but we remember. We remember what our Lord did for us. His terrible suffering. His death on the cross. But yes, yes, we rejoice because our King our Lord lives, the risen Savior, Jesus Christ, who reigns and rules for eternity. Praise God. And so, Lord, as your church, help us. Help us that we may take the message of the gospel. And we don't have to go very far. Sure, Missions across the world are very important, but we have a mission field right here in our community, particularly with the influx of people coming in, brings great opportunity. So we, may we see it as that and seize the opportunity that folks may come as a result of an invitation and hear the life-saving message of the gospel and the means through which we have life, Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we pray as our Lord taught us, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated and thank you. And so now, oh boy, come on up, kids. It's time. Miss Mary's got a great story for your listening pleasure. that were with me and I think the ones that were, were with Miss Beth. And what is this day? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. What do I have? A palm. I kind of took it out of Mr. Sammy's arrangement up there so I could have a <laughs> visual here. <laughs> okay. So what happened on Palm Sunday? Where was Jesus going? To Jerusalem for the Passover. He and his disciples were driving in a car. Well, what not yet? He got to the donkey. Now, they were traveling before them. They were what? They were walking. And on the way, he told his disciples, "Says you go ahead to that town, and you will find a donkey tied up, untied, and bring it to me." Okay. So they went and they found it, and they were untying it. And there were some guys there going, "Um, and why are you taking the donkey?" And I said, "The Lord needs it. He will return it to you." That's kind of like, a, they were almost kind of stealing it, but, you know, when they said the Lord needed it, they let them have it. Okay. And they got right the, brought the donkey back to Jesus, and what did they do? They put what on it? Blankets and coats. Because they didn't have a saddle. You know, most of the time when you ride a horse or a donkey, you've got, well, not a horse anyway, you put a saddle. So they put blankets on it so it would be a little bit softer, you think, for Jesus to ride it? Yeah. And then people had palms. And what did they do? 
they wave them. Sometimes they put them on the road. They also put their coats at, on the road. Now, if you put your coat on the road for, my, for the car to run over, then would Mama be happy? <laughs> no, no. But these were to, to that. And Abraham, you tell me, what did they say as they went in? All right, Hosanna, Hosanna. It is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna in the highest. Good. They were celebrating. They were happy, and they were singing, and they were celebrating and waving their palms. Well, you know, just as those people celebrated 2,000 years ago, we came today to celebrate Jesus. And what better day? In Palm Sunday, because the Bible says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Isn't that right? Okay. All right, let's say a little prayer. Hold your hands and remember, you're going to repeat after me. Dear God, we celebrate today just as those people celebrated in Jerusalem. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Good job. All right. Okay. All right. Now you speak out so.
Thank you so much. Powerful and certainly appropriate for Holy Week. Thank you, Shallow Well Church, for your faithful giving as always. And we're very grateful. And if you'd like to donate today, uh, you may do so. At the end of the service, we have our friendly ushers who will be glad to assist you, as well as collection boxes at the Amen Corner and in the Narthex for your convenience, as well as online at shallow-well.org, or you can text the word GIVE to the number on the screen. Again, thank you so much for your faithful giving. And so now we transition to our time of corporate prayer. And during the prayer, I'll prompt you to send your requests that are on your hearts and minds to the one who is able, and that would be King Jesus. And so we can come to him with great assurance because of who he is, okay, and his great care and love for us, his creation. So um, we, pr we pray um, expectantly because of his goodness. We, it may not always turn out the way that we think is best, but that's where faith comes in and trusting the one who does know best. And we're going to talk more about that in our sermon time today as well. But now let's go to the Lord in prayer. And indeed, we do thank you, God, for your great care and concern for us. And it's just amazing when we think about it. You, you know the number of hairs in our head. You know everything about us because you created us and, and you have a real interest in us because just as a, a parent, an earthly parent has great concern and love for their child, you do so for your creation, Lord. And we thank you for that. Thank you for your love, your tremendous love. And so, Lord, I lift up those who aren't able to be here today. Uh, many of which long to be here but are unable to do so. So we lift up every person um, going through different trials and different circumstances, Lord, that your hand be upon them, that um, we as their church will continue to pray for them, Lord. And God, just I ask you grant encouragement and even peace, Lord. It's a real privilege to be here today, and a lot of times we take things for granted until we're not able to do something. So we lift them up to you, God. And, and those going through various illnesses, a lot of bad things going around, and, and other um, circumstances and challenges, Lord, in our congregation, we lift them up to you as well. And we thank you. Lord, thank you for the technology you've given us where we can live stream and record this worship service. It's a tremendous blessing, and I, and I thank everyone who worked so hard to make it happen as well, God. We thank you for that. And, Lord, um, there are many concerns and prayer requests on our hearts and minds, so we give those to you now. Indeed, we thank you, O Lord. These prayers spoken and those unspoken, we, we humbly submit to you with great assurance because of who you are. So again, be with all those mentioned in those prayers that are in our hearts, Lord. Just uh, be with those, God. May your hand be upon them and help them, Lord. And we thank you that you do care, and we thank you for who you are. So may we continue during this time of worship to seek to bring glory to you through our humble efforts, because we do this for you. And again, we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. So now we're going to continue with more great music, and that will be courtesy of our choir. Service today as we were doing the call and response. Oh, 
kingdoms of earth sing to God. Sing praises to the Lord. I don't know if that's by accident. That's interesting. You know, a few months ago, I got up here and I, I talked a little bit about some of the different ways that we can use our individual talents here at this church and some of the different ways we can do the work of the church in different ways. And there are many, many different ways that you can volunteer here, many different jobs that need to be done here. Yeah. One of those opportunities for you, and I call it an opportunity for a very specific reason, is singing to the Lord. And I, I just want to share something that I shared with the choir in our, our first official rehearsal last week. There are, there are moments in our life that stand out. And sometimes those moments in our life are those moments when we feel close to God. It's not every day. It's not every minute of every single day that we feel that special connection. But it's those special times. And maybe it's when you're listening to Eric preach. Maybe it's when you're sitting here in a moment of silence. Maybe it's when you're on the mountainside and watching the wind blow through the trees. Mm. There are many different ways to feel closer to God. And for me, some of the times in my life, those moments in my life when I felt closest to God, music was involved. Yeah. Music was involved. Whether I'm singing it, playing it, listening to it, music was involved. So I am here today to invite each and every one of you to join this group as we try to get closer to God through music. We have a rehearsal today at 6 p.m. You are welcome to come join us. We have a wide variety of talents up here, people that have, you know, majored in music and sung for the Lord that way, people whose primary instrument was the radio when they were in high school. <laughs> Your skill level does not matter. You're welcome at 6 o'clock. I hope to see you there at any point.
Mr. John Haas, um, come on. It's a great time to be a part of the choir, and I thank you, choir. Thank you, John. And kids, guess what? It's time. You already know where to come. It's children's worship time. It's going to be great. Come on down. Yeah. We all like approval, don't we? Don't we like to be approved? Maybe, for example, um, you apply for a home loan and you get approved. That's a good feeling. Maybe um, your daughter brings home a, a nice young man and, and you approve of him. That's always a good thing, right? <laughs> I recall um, I got some interesting looks, you know, in the 80s. Um, Where's John Godfrey? Uh, there he is. You know, you remember the mullet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I rocked a, a, a pretty awesome mullet. And can you imagine, um, you know, it's business in the front and party in the back, I believe is the term, right, for the mullet. But the bottom line is if I come up to your door, I'd probably have been concerned <laughs> as a parent. But, you know, the, the, the charm and the good looks prevail. I always had a good op I always had a good relationship with, with, with parents. So um, at the same time, we like approval. You know what we don't like? Not being approved. It's a bad feeling. You know, for example, if you um, apply for maybe a scholarship and you didn't get approved for a scholarship, it can really bring us down. So approval is something that um, we it's in our nature, we desire it and we enjoy it, not so much not being approved. And so we're going to look at this today from God's perspective. And, and our younger audience today, I would like for you to really pay attention, not that you don't always, right? But today, pay particular attention because even though this is applicable for everyone here today, myself included, I really think it's catered more toward a younger audience, and, and I hope you'll understand why as we go through. So today we're in 2 Timothy. We're continuing our study of this great epistle, chapter 2, verses 14 through 18. So recall last week we were talking about remaining steadfast, remaining steadfast, and we do that by remembering the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We, we celebrate that this week, and, and we will certainly emphasize it next Sunday, even though we always should emphasize it, because remember, the Apostle Paul said, without the resurrection, your faith is futile. My faith is futile. Okay, very important. But then also we remain steadfast by receiving the suffering for Christ. That doesn't sound very encouraging, but the truth is our Lord suffered and we should expect to suffer. And Peter even goes as far to say, count it joy in your suffering. Why? Because we're suffering for the king. And I promise you this, the suffering that we do now for Jesus will be rewarded when we are in glory with him. And then finally, recalling the promises of Christ. We always want to be recalling the promises. Well, how do we know the promises of Christ? Well, we know these through his word, the commandments of Jesus, the promises of Jesus, because he's good and he does not lie. Okay, so the charge of 2 Timothy is to preach or proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why at the end of every sermon in, in our Timothy series, you'll see the slide, preach the gospel. In 1 Timothy, it was protect the gospel, protect this valuable gift, and now we proclaim it. We protect, we proclaim, okay? No, there are many false gospels. We, in fact, this is one of the reasons Paul wrote to Timothy was because of false teaching. But there's only one true gospel according to the scriptures. And so remember, belief determines behavior. Belief determines behavior. Okay, so, so understanding this, okay, let's see how what, what, what God 
approves according to the text. The first is this. God approves talking in a way that honors him. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Let's hear verse 14. And this is just fantastic. Remind them of these things. What are these things? Well, we'll, be, we'll go back to that in just a minute. And charge them before God, not the quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. Hmm. So these things point back to the previous section, as I said. So let's go back quickly to verse 8 of chapter 2. This was from last week, so you should recall this. Remember Jesus Christ. That could have a period right at the end. Remember Jesus Christ. But it goes on to say, risen from the dead, the risen, the crucified and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. The offspring of David, pointing to his lineage, okay, also his humanity, Fully God, fully human. That's Jesus Christ. And then finally, the testimony, or rather, I'm sorry, um, got mixed, mixed up here for a minute. So, um, remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel. Not Paul's gospel, but the gospel that he proclaims, the gospel of Jesus Christ, for which I am suffering. So, he is suffering, remember, He's writing to Timothy, this, he's, he's waiting to die in a Roman prison, okay? And he would be martyred, okay? Bound with chains as a criminal. But here's your transition. But the word of God is not bound. I may be in chains, but the word of God is not because the word of God is living and active like a two-edged sword. It can pierce bone and marrow. Therefore, because of that, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, those in Christ Jesus, that they may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Amen. Wow. So we remember what Christ has done. Remember Jesus Christ as verse 8 starts out. Charge, which also means to warn them not to quarrel. That doesn't mean we don't debate on matters of faith and practice. That's why we have so many denominations, right? But the bottom line is this. We have to agree on the primary doctrines or the primary tenets of the faith. For example, Jesus Christ is God, one of the three persons of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, non-negotiable, all right? And there's others, of course. Remember, one of Paul's primary purposes in writing to Timothy was to refute false teaching. And we're going to see an example here in our next section. However, we also must maintain the unity in Christ's church. Okay? We strive to build up the body. That's what we do. And so we see an example of this in Acts. Acts 18 and Apollos, okay, Apollos. Let's hear about Apollos. This is verses 25 and 26. Now a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent man, competent in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord. And being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus though he only knew the baptism of John. Hmm. So he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila, now this is a husband and wife who fled Rome because of persecution and came to Ephesus, when they heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. They didn't call him out in front of everybody else. That's the wrong way to do something, Okay. It's going to go ahead and tell you. You take them to the side and talk and not beat up or nothing like that. But speak truth and love. Let's continue. And when he wished to cross to Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. When he arrived, he greatly helped those through grace who through grace had believed, for he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing that by the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. So make no bones about it. He proclaimed Jesus, okay, because he was Jewish. He cared about the Jews, just like Paul was Jewish. He cared about the Jews. So he proclaimed what's true even to those who didn't believe. At the same time, he could have sneered at Aquila and Priscilla, but he understood that they're trying to help. And so they did it the right way, pulled them aside, explained baptism, Baptism, okay, which is still misunderstood today. Baptism does not save. 
okay? Faith in Jesus Christ says baptism is a public profession, okay, before the church of our faith in Jesus Christ and that we will serve him and acknowledge him as Lord. But baptism does not say, okay? Now, there's other denominations that say you must be baptized to be saved. Well, I guess the thief on the cross had a real problem. You see what I'm saying? Baptism is very important. Jesus was baptized, okay? In fact, he was immersed, which is why I affirm baptism by immersion, okay? At the same time, doesn't save, okay? But it is an act of obedience because Jesus was baptized. Just for example, so, so they corrected him, okay? He wasn't baptized in John. He was baptized through the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Dead to sin, alive in Christ. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dead to sin, alive in Christ. It's a beautiful picture of our own salvation. So when we see a baptism, and when we have baptism later this year, I want to encourage everybody to come, number one, because it's a great celebration that someone has given their life to Jesus and want to move forward in this wonderful ordinance of baptism. And secondly, it reminds us of our own salvation, or it should. It should. So, we must maintain the unity in the church. Ruin, okay, the, this, this term is where we get our word catastrophe, and that literally means destruction, right? So, our talk should honor God and edify others. It should, okay? And so, we bring glory to God by exercising patience with others through our communication, okay? And so, in the church, this is, this is crucial, because we don't need to have, we, we, we just, we need to strive. Is every church perfect? There's no perfect church, okay? At the same time, if we're focusing on Jesus and his commands to love God and love others, and we try to really get it right in the church, then I believe the church can be, if you will, an attraction for those outside the church. Because I'm telling you, for every 1,000 things we do well, it takes just one to ruin everything. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so it, this, this isn't a scolding by any means. It's just simply, hey, let's live out what we are instructed to do. Let's be the unified body of Christ. We bring glory to God by exercising patience with others through our communication. God approves talking in a way that honors him. Secondly, God approves working in a way that honors him. This is verse 15, and this is just another fantastic one do your best to present yourself to one to god as one approved a worker who has no need to be ashamed rightly handling the word of truth now i know what you're thinking well he's writing to timothy and timothy was a church leader this is applicable for all in christ okay let me make that very clear all right Next, Paul encourages Timothy to present himself as one approved, or that in this context it means genuine, okay? A genuine ambassador of the faith, okay? God bestows his approval on the one who exhibits truth, love, and godliness in daily living and who correctly handles the word of truth, okay? Well, you can't correctly handle the word of truth if you're not invested in the word of God, okay? It's very important. Remember, the ongoing issue with the false teachers was they perverted the word of God. They twisted it to, to, to uh, work for what they believed, okay? And it's still happening today. So, again, listen, if you, talk, if you listen to any preacher, all right, I don't care if it's on TV or if you're streaming it or live like today, you have your word of God, and I would challenge you, okay, to, to read for yourself. All right? That's why here at Shallow Well Church, we, we, we preach biblically-based expositional sermons because it's not, I don't, look, you don't want to know what I think. I want you to know two things. One, what was the original author trying to convey to their audience, and how do we apply it today? That's, what, that's the goal. That's the goal of the expositor. Okay, it's very important. Therefore, an investment of time must be made in the scriptures. I was fortunate that God saw fit to allow me the opportunity to obtain a theological education. I don't take it for granted, 
Okay. At the same time, it required a choice. I may have shared this before, but it's worth repeating. I was living in the mountains of North Carolina. I like the mountains of North Carolina. Okay. Um, I believe that there's God's country on this earth. That's that's a pretty good candidate. At the same time, God made it real clear. Um, I want you to increase in the knowledge of me, and it's going to require you to go. And I ended up back where I grew up in the Raleigh-Durham area, which is not where I wanted to go. I left for a reason. <laughs> it's still home, but, but you hear what I'm saying. But you know, that's where faith and obedience come in. God, I'm going to trust you to send me to the... I wanted to say barren wasteland, but it's not that bad. Um, it, 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 to send me back, okay? And you know what the Lord did? He blessed it. Well, how did he bless it, Eric? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because when I went and I interviewed at the first church where I served, on the personnel committee was a rather attractive young woman who drove a Trans Am. And two things I, I, I like, you know, I, I like... I thought she was very pretty, and I really liked the car, okay, because I'm a muscle car guy, right? And you know what? That's where I met my wife. So my point is this. God, okay, n not knowing any of this stuff, it, it started with, I'm going to do what you say. I'm going to go where you say go. It reminds me of Ruth. Brother Mike talked about Ruth a couple weeks ago. I will go where you go, and your God will be my God. And I thank God. And so God has really blessed me. And the greatest blessing um, that I received outside of my relationship, obviously, with Jesus Christ is my wife. So I thank God. So, hey, I'm not saying that you're always going to um, find your <laughs> or, or be led to your loved one. I'm just simply saying God blesses obedience. He does. I promise you. And young people, that's what I want you to know because you're going to be pulled, man. You're going to be pulled in all these different directions. This is where you go to school. This is what you need to major in. This is what you need to do. Seek God. Seek God. More on that to come. So, and here it is. However, um, I firmly believe that anyone, if anyone takes the time to invest in God's word, he will honor it and help that person through divine revelation. And one way, for example, is I often cite Jeremiah 29, 11. I love that verse. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to do you harm, plans to give you future and hope. What a promise. What a God. For our young people here today, I encourage you not only to memorize, but pray on this verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. Okay? I can tell you this, because, again, you're going to be pulled in all these different directions on what to do. And look, God, like, for example, my dad sat me down in 1990 and um, because I know my dad was a man of prayer. How did I know my dad was a man of prayer? Well, I witnessed it in person okay whether it be in the house or in the church but then every morning that bedroom door was closed and i know why that bedroom door was closed because he, he was on his knees praying and a lot of times the prayer i know was for me because i needed it and so he was sitting me down and i'm sure after prayer um god imp imparted on him and based upon the wisdom that god gave him he said you need to go in the air force and I did. One of the few times I listened, I went in the Air Force, and that was a good decision. Still doing it. It's just unbelievable. So, so my point is this, is yes, if you have godly parents and godly people in your lives, you want to get, you, you want to talk to them, but go to the main source. Don't bypass the main source, which is God. You hear what I'm saying? Can I get an amen? amen. I'm going to make sure you're with me. This is very important to understand. And although there is no shame in doing the work of the Lord, okay, you can use the vocation, whatever you decide to do, you can use that vocation that God lays on your heart to glorify him and to make him known through working in a way that honors him. You can have a platform to make him known whatever the occupation is. We need more godly men and women who are engineers, who are doctors, who are lawyers. We need that, okay? 
Very important. At the same time, it's a noble thing to serve the Lord as a vocation. I thank God. You know, I'm not going to say it's easy. It's not, nothing truly meaningful in life is easy. At the same time, I, I, I relish this, and I thank God for it, and I thank God for you. So, we bring glory to God. We are grounded in his word and apply his teachings in one way is through our work. Our work. God approves talking in a way that honors him. He approves working in a way that honors him. And then finally, God approves walking in a way. Walking. So talking, working, and walking in a way that honors him. Listen to verses 16 through 18 of chapter 2. But avoid irreverent babble. That should sound familiar. For it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have swerved from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened. That's the resurrection of, of the elect, not, not the Lord. That did happen. They are upsetting the faith of some. Hmm. So recall back in 1 Timothy at the very end, in verse 20 of chapter 6, Paul uses the same language, avoid irreverent babble. In fact, let's just go back there real quick because it's just a couple pages over. And so, old Timothy, guard the deposit entrusted to you, the deposit, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Avoid the irreverent babble and contradictions of what some falsely call knowledge. Because the professing it, some have swerved from the faith. And so we see the repetition here as well. And he warns, Paul warns him because he loved Timothy and he's trying to help Timothy avoid irreverent babble. Why? Why? Well, it tells us because it will sped, spread like gangrene. That's a term you don't hear a whole lot anymore. But it was a big problem, particularly during our wars with our troops and what it is is a dangerous and potentially fatal condition that happens when the blood flow to a large area of tissue is cut off. This causes the tissue to break down and die so it, it turns all different colors and looks horrible and it can lead to death. So the point here is if, you're, if, you, if you don't nip it in the bud, what's going to happen is it's going to spread, okay, it's going to destroy. So who was doing it? Well, the text tells us, and very few times does Paul actually call out specifics, but in this case, Hymenaeus and Philetus. Hymenaeus was mentioned back in 1 Timothy 1.20. Okay? He said that I, 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 I've turned him over to Satan because of what he's doing. Well, obviously he hasn't learned his lesson yet because he's still causing um, issues even likely 10 years later at the writing of this text. And Philetus is only mentioned here, but because Paul mentions him, he must have had quite an influence in the church, obviously, or he wouldn't have mentioned him, right? So what? So what were they saying? Okay, well, the text also says the false teaching was the resurrection um, of those in Christ, not Christ, but those in Christ had already occurred. This was likely an early form of Gnosticism. Well, what's that? That's a false teaching that denies the material, or more specifically, the body, okay, and focuses on the spiritual. In other words, the body, matter, um, is bad, spiritual, good. And, and, and I'm going to turn to um, a very great commentator, Dr. Newt Larson, to explain this led to the practice of discounting anything connected with physical life, making daily obligations and concerns for holy living irrelevant. Spiritualizing the resurrection diminished the sacrifice of Christ. A fully human Jesus died and a fully human Jesus was raised from the dead. Okay? It also removed the necessity of enduring hardship and promoted immoral living. In this way, they destroy the faith of some. That's why the body meant nothing to these Gnostics, so they would engage in perverted acts and didn't really care about the body. But guess what Jesus says about the body? The body is what? It's a temple. And I'm going to tell you something else. Your body is his body. 
If you're in Jesus Christ, your body is his body. And so we want to take care of our bodies. We want to be good stewards of everything that's God's, and that includes us. Now, do I fall short? You betcha. In fact, I just got through telling Patricia, I'd love to be on that bus on Thursday. But I got to go test for the United States Air Force next month. And if I hit that buffet or get that big old, big old plate, okay, I'm going to be carrying about five to ten more pounds around the neighborhood when I run. But don't worry, I'll be there afterwards. I promise you that. I'll be on that bus come May. <laughs> it's discipline. It, it, it's discipline, okay? So, belief determines behavior, as I said. To walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, okay, that's Colossians 1.10, we must learn and live out the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? They're not burdensome. They're not? That's right. Let's hear 1 John 5, 2, and 3. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. It sounds a lot of times when we read and we reflect on the scriptures, it sounds very burdensome. But the bottom line is this. When we do it God's way, he's going to bless it. And in the end, it's going to be much better. I, I'm just telling you. And that's one thing, one of the only um, positives of getting older is I know this. Okay? Because God has shown me. I know what my life was like before Jesus, and I know what my life is like once I gave my life to him. And I promise it's so much better, so I implore you today, if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, don't wait. Don't wait. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. And the truth is, is that his way is better, and his commandments, they're not burdensome. When you love someone, you'll do for them because you love them. Do you love them? Yes. He loves you. He loves you so much. He so loved the world. He gave his only son that whoever would believe in him will not perish. Whoever would believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God approves talking in a way that honors him, working in a way that honors him, and certainly walking this continuous walk, walking with Jesus, walking in a way that honors him. So God approves, which also means blesses the approved the genuine. So God blesses the genuine. God approves the approved. So a reminder, because I told you I was going to do it, next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. And so it's going to be a tremendous time of, of music, and we're going to be in 1 Corinthians 15, so we're going to focus on this resurrection. Okay, without which there is no faith. The faith is futile. And so we'll also partake of the Lord's Supper. So it's going to be a wonderful time. So again, I would ask you, Shallowell Church, please be intentional and invite someone this week to church next Sunday because I'm telling you, faith comes from hearing the word of Christ. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to ask our team to come up and, and lead us and then we're going to have a time of invitation if you would like to come forward. Um, no pressure, okay? But the truth is, is that we're family here. Maybe, you, maybe you're carrying a burden. Jesus says to cast his burdens on him. We can pray about that because he can handle it. That's why a relationship with him is so important because he's able, okay? Um, when we are weak, he is strong. Maybe you'd like to give your life to him. Maybe you've never done that before. I, I tell you, um, I'd love to talk with you and pray with you um, about that. Or maybe, like me, you back, you backslidden. Maybe Jesus isn't a priority. He needs to be. He, he's Savior, but he's not Lord. I'd love to pray with you about that. And then, finally, maybe you'd like to join this fellowship of believers. That would be amazing as well. Whatever God's lay on your heart, respond. Respond, respond. Let us pray. And thank you, God. Um, thank you for your great love. And as we've seen today, when, when we do it your way, um, you're going to bless it. Consequently, um, when we don't do things your way, there's consequences. And, and 
Um, that can really be avoided. A lot of pain and suffering can be avoided if we just do it your way, because your way is best. But we're human, and we, we, we like things our way, and that's very difficult. It's very difficult to, to surrender, which coming to you is. It's surrender. The great hymn, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender. All to thee I freely give. I pray that occurs today for anyone who hasn't given their life to you because, again, life with you brings assurance, peace, joy, even in the midst of all the perils and all the struggles and all the challenges of this world. So, God, thank you. Thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We're going to change up what's in the bulletin just a little bit. We're going to do a song called All My Hope. Um, and this just talks about exactly what Eric has said, you know, where we've been, where we've come from, and how God's changed us. And we're going to ask you all to stand and worship with us. Now, on the verses, Drew is going to sing, and Drew is a little nervous, I think. Um, but I just want to say how blessed we are to have young people that want to participate in the music and do these things. I think it's wonderful. Um, and so he's going to sing the verses, and we're going to join in in the chorus. So sing with us. Bye. 
Shelby Fulton. Uh, I met with Shelby uh, last Sunday and we talked and she's very excited to be at Shallow Well. She says that one of the things that really drew her was you. You know, the fellowship and the friendliness. Am, am I telling the truth? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And she wants to join our congregation. So um, and she's going to do it by a letter of transfer from St. Luke Anglican down in Hilton Head. That's a beautiful area. Yeah, Hilton Head. So, hey, praise God. Um, can I get a motion for Shelby to join the church? Make a motion. How about, oh, yeah, we, we didn't have to wait for that second. I tell you what, praise God. So all in favor, would you say amen? Amen. And look, Shallow Well Church, I want you to come up. I know Ron's Barnes line's going to get a little long, but would you just come on up and welcome Shelby? And, hey, I want to pray for Shelby, and then Brother John Haas is going to close us out with our choir. But look, hey, praise God. Um, I'm, I'm so glad you're here. And you know what? Um, I, I know it was tugging at our heart, and one of our members said, go on up, go on up, you know? <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit at work, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm telling you right now. So let me pray. We're going to pray for Shelby, and you come and welcome her. And thank God for what he's doing here at Shiloh Church. Amen? Amen. All right, let, let's pray. Lord, I lift up Shelby to you. I rejoice today. We rejoice today, Lord, that you have brought her here, God. And again, we've asked you, Lord, to send us people, Lord, people who can come and invest in you and in your church, so we thank you. We also know along with that will come the spiritual battle because Satan doesn't like any of this, Lord. So, God, I pray your protection. I pray your hand upon her, Lord. I pray, God, that as her church, her new church family, we will commit to pray for her, Lord, and we thank you, God. So, God, you know the burdens, Lord. Help her. God, because you are good and faithful, and we thank you, and we rejoice this great decision today, Lord, because you are a great God, and you're always at work. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name I pray, amen.